team. Um, also, good morning to DG, uh, DDG, and the uh, staff of the department and staff of the ministry, uh, staff of uh, the committee and the uh, uh, communication uh, unit of uh, parliament, uh, media, uh, PMG, uh, everybody, uh, good morning. Uh, this, this morning we uh, are going to be receiving a, a briefing uh, from the Department of uh, Tourism uh, on the status of uh, uh, the infrastructure uh, projects. Uh, but we will now uh, start uh, uh, first with the adoption of the minutes. And uh, after that, uh, I will then ask uh, the minister to make uh, opening remarks. Uh, if uh, she has not yet joined, and then I will hand over to the deputy minister uh, uh, to open, uh, uh, to make the opening remarks. And then you will then indicate uh, who will be taking us through the, 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 the briefing. Can we start then uh, flighting the minutes of the last meeting? Sorry, Chair. Honorable Boshoff. What about apologies? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm Recording in progress. <laughs> sorry, thank you for that. Uh, thank you for reminding. Uh, are there any <coughs> apologies? Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Boshoff. Uh, committee Secretary. Chair. Good morning, Chair and Honourable Members. But also indicate if you, we also have a quorum, those that are in the attendance. Yes, Chairperson, we do have a quorum. We have Honourable Dango, we have Honourable Moimang, we have Honourable Mamarekhane, we have Honourable Brutaset, Honourable Apleni, and Honourable Mushudi. Thank you so much. Any the, apologies? The apologies, we only have two apologies from Mr. Mr. Lensman and Ms. Matebula. Thank you so much. Uh, and Honorable Bosov, Chair, Honorable Bosov wasn't listed. Honorable Bosov is also in the meeting. Oh, I, you didn't I mention think I Honorable did call her. I'm sorry, I did. <laughs> Honorable <laughs> Bosov is also in the house. Thank, Thank you. you. Honorable Thank Bosch you so Bosch much, uh, Honorable Chief. Okay. Can, can we then uh, flight the minutes? And Rico? While he's flighting, Mr. Lund is chair. also... You see, Chair, this, this, this attendance is important because this, these PMG people do a score for us. Indeed. And we have to indeed. see whether they're in the meetings or not. <laughs> indeed, yeah. <laughs> But they, but they must know that when we are not here, uh, we are also attending to other parliamentary business as well. <laughs> like uh, Honorable Dango uh, uh, told them at some, uh, uh, at some stage. Uh, can you scroll down, please? Attendance, uh, apologies. Delegation from the Department of uh, DTIC. I'm in the support staff. Penning and welcome. Consideration of minutes and reports. Consideration and adoption of the budget vote report of the Department of Employment and Labor. Consideration and adoption of minutes of the 7th of June, 2022. Uh, briefing by the Department on Black Industrial Risk Program. Okay. 
deliberations. Resolutions in closing. And I remember, are there any corrections? Are there any omissions? If not, uh, can we have a mover and a second for the adoption of the minutes? Um, I move, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Dango, any second? Honorable Mark, second day, any contrary view? Not. So the minutes of the 14th of June have been uh, adopted. Thank you very much, uh, honorable members. Um, just want to check if uh, the minister is uh, Zoe, Ms. Adams. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, thank you. Honorable Khai, uh, we are struggling with connectivity at the estate in um, in Pretoria where Minister currently is. Yeah. So as, as soon as she is able to connect, we will connect her. Okay. Okay, maybe then in the meantime, let's allow uh, Honorable uh, Deputy Minister uh, Fishman Fellow to make uh, opening remarks and then they will indicate uh, who will then be taking us through the the report or the, the presentation. Over to you, uh, DM. Uh, good morning, Chair, and good morning to honorable members. Um, uh, we want to, to thank you for giving us an opportunity to, to make a presentation on the on the infrastructure project that the department is implementing. You will recall, Chair, that in the, in the APP presentation, we did make a presentation on the, on the, on the projects, uh, but without going into details about each project, of which now, uh, 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 as per your request, we'll then be able to give you a detailed presentation in terms of the projects that we are doing. The, the, pro, the, the, the projects are, are divided into, into three categories. We've got community-based tourism projects, uh, of which a bulk of which are development or upgrading of the accommodation facilities. And then the next, the second one will be your maintenance pro, I mean projects with the national uh, parks or provincial parks uh, um, because we've, 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 we've also requested provinces uh, to make submission on some of the provincial parks or assets that they want to, to upgrade and beautify. And then the last one will be the destination enhancement and initiatives, which includes development uh, of the upgrading of facilities or the implementation of the universal accessibility initiatives. So all in all, the project thus far uh, will be will will be presented by our, by the DDG uh, state. But before I do that, I will then through you chair request that uh, uh, we give the DG to just give briefly introductory remarks, uh, and then before I hand over to to the DG to, to to make a presentation. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Chair. Uh, DG. Good morning, Honourable Chairperson, and. Uh, Morning. Uh, 
to the honourable members, uh, to the deputy minister, and also to the colleagues, both from the department as well as uh, the support colleagues on the side of parliament. <clears throat> uh, honourable chairperson, we we must confess, for the longest of time, we struggled with uh, projects that were incomplete, projects that. Um, in some of the instances were uh, mismanaged, um, where we, as we reported previously, we've ended up uh, in some cases uh, having to go through the, the civil route to attempt to recover some of uh, the losses. Um, and we have also gone through uh, criminal uh, uh, processes to 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 try and make sure that uh, there's accountability on these matters. Uh, those processes are running, uh, including processes internally in terms of uh, labor-related uh, cases that are, are progressing. But what we then uh, realized we needed to do was to strengthen the capacity to be able to implement these projects effectively. Uh, so you would find projects that that really date back uh, a couple of years uh, that we are now in a much better position to be able to uh, effectively implement them and make sure that they ultimately uh, yield the desirable results. Uh, we then went on to acquire the services of uh, the Development Bank of Southern Africa. Uh, they have a huge uh, infrastructure portfolio, which has done quite a lot of good work across uh, the country and also outside the country within the, 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 the continent. And in that, uh, we then entered into a framework agreement, uh, which is uh, renewable. We could actually uh, renew that uh, for another three years. Uh, for now, we are in the first uh, uh, three years, and we did uh, get affected a little bit by COVID, in that uh, we, we could have, by now, most of these projects would probably be saying to you, uh, please visit this site, we are done with it, please visit that site, we are done with it. Uh, but we we are still on track. Um, of course, we, we 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 are slightly behind, but we're still on track. And should there be a need, we will then uh, uh, consider uh, granting them an extension to be able to conclude some of these uh, these projects. Um, I will then request uh, DG Shetia uh, through you, Chairperson, and through the Deputy Minister to then take us through the details of the presentation including the, uh, the mechanisms that we use to monitor the progress on these particular projects. And uh, I will leave it to her to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, DG. Uh, over to you, DG. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, good morning, uh, Honorable Members, uh, Honorable DM, uh, DG and colleagues. Um, the presentation uh, is organized according to the provinces and also arranged so that you are able to see which entities are implementing these projects. If we could perhaps move to slide four, uh, Petra. Um, thank you. We've included acronyms so that you're also able to follow which entities and provinces they are, colleagues. Um, so if we go to the first slide, um, DM's already, uh, you know, uh, it, it um, uh, briefed you on the types of projects we implement. Uh, all of our projects are implemented in partnership with various provincial and national entities uh, who are then responsible for appointing implementing agents. Um, we have discontinued 10 projects uh, in, for a variety of reasons, which I will explain. And at the moment, we have approximately 99 infrastructure projects in implementation. We say approximately 99 uh, honorable members uh, because we are still in negotiation and discussion with provinces on uh, which maintenance projects we, we're going to fund. Our projects then are funded primarily through the expanded public works program. But in the last financial year, we were fortunate to receive funding for our maintenance program from the President's uh, Presidential Employment Stimulus Program. Um, and we do have a few projects that we've also received donor funding for. Uh, slide. 
this is a summary of the projects that we've discontinued. Um, and there are a variety of reasons why we've discontinued these various projects. The first one, which is the Eastern Cape Kiwane project, was actually completed by the municipality. So there was no longer uh, a need for the department to be involved in this project. Um, there were three projects that didn't proceed beyond the planning stage. The Free State Emperani and the Eastern Cape in Dansane project didn't move beyond the planning stage because when we did an assessment of the capital outlay, mm -hmm. uh, it was found to be actually too costly and would, would not actually be operationally sustainable. So we discontinued those two projects at planning for that reason. And the Mpumalanga Botlabela Cultural Village there were a number of governance, land ownership, and also long-term viability and sustainability challenges. So that project also didn't proceed beyond planning. There were three projects then that were va vandalized or destroyed. Uh, the Eastern Cape Tenerhead Lodge and the Eastern Cape Kaukeni project were damaged by fire, um, and we, we discontinued that project. Uh, in the Free State, the Baralong Busuleka project had been vandalized, and the department determined that there was a very little uh, reason to further invest uh, in a project that had been so severely vandalized. There were three other projects that then alternate site use was recommended for the LP Sekakuni and the LP24 rivers. That alternate site use was a multi-purpose facility, and as it was no longer tourism use, uh, we actually discontinued our involvement in the project. And the Eastern Cape Rock Art Project was actually found not to be self-sustaining. So those are the 10 projects in the last uh, few years that we've discontinued. Uh, the next slide then contains uh, a summary, as Diem has already spoken to, which are the categories of projects that we are actually engaged in. Um, I'm going to skip this particular slide because, as Diem indicated, they're community-based projects. They're projects then that are in maintenance or upgrading, and they're universal accessibility. So they're 30 community projects, uh, and that's the spread across the provinces. There are 66 projects that are currently uh, being considered for maintenance and upgrading purposes, uh, and there are three universal accessibility, and that makes up the 99. We'll start then with the Eastern Cape province, uh, which is the next slide. Mm -hmm. We have five uh, community projects that are currently being implemented uh, in, in, in the Eastern Cape. The Maluti Hiking Trail, the Mtonsi Lodge, Kachwa Lodge, Nyandeni Chalets and the Western Temboland. And at this point in time, we've appointed our professional services. Uh, projects are in the planning stage, and in fact, procurement is underway, and we're, uh, we're uh, imagining, not imagining, but construction is expected to commence in quarter two of this financial year. In the Eastern Cape, we have finalized these four projects that are, in fact, going to be uh, uh, part of our provincial maintenance program. And these projects also are in planning, and also we're expecting that the uh, maintenance work will commence in quarter two. The next slide um, is the Bavianskloff World Heritage Site. This is the first of our donor-funded projects. We received donor funding from the European Union for this project uh, in partnership with Treasury. And uh, this project has now been completed. There were two components. The leopard trail hiking huts were, were one component. And the second component was the interpretative uh, visitor center. Um, the project has, of course, been completed and handed over to the province. Um, we also have the six-day hiking trail. Um, and this is the construction of overnight accommodation at Mpanda, Nganzane, Hluleka, and three bay sites. The construction of these chalets at uh, three of the sites is currently at 75% completion. The last site, uh, we're still waiting for uh, EIA approval to be granted. And once the EIA approval is uh, granted, uh, the construction at the three bay site will commence. We then have included some pictures of the Belvianskloff Interpretation Center. Um, in, in, the, in the Eastern Cape, uh, so honorable members can actually uh, see this. 
Um, and this then are pictures during the day of the hikers' huts uh, and, and the leopard trail. The site is very popular and in fact fully booked um, and the, the facilities are in fact being very well used. At the launch event, uh, DM was also able to engage uh, with hikers who were in fact using and, and visiting uh, this, this facility. Uh, next slide, please. Continuing in the Eastern Cape, we have a universal access uh, project uh, at uh, the Dwesa Nature Reserve. Um, and that project was also completed in November 2021. We're also then um, working on beach infrastructure development uh, at various sites um, uh, in, in the Eastern Cape. Um, and with regard to the Kranz and Middle Beach sites, these are now at 98% uh, completion. Uh, for the crime site, it's just the ablution facilities that need to be connected to the nearest sewer connection. The Kawi work is still outstanding, uh, and the Mzamba site is actually at a planning stage. Uh, our project then on um, the Addo National Park is also a project where we're actually looking at the enhancement of uh, family chalets. Uh, this work is at a design stage, but we've also put the Sand Parks has put the tender out for uh, a contractor, um, and that tender actually uh, closed on the 20th. Uh, so we're hoping that construction then will commence shortly after the procurement is completed. The, the last slide, I think, if I'm correct, uh, on the Eastern Cape is our maintenance program uh, with the national parks. And there are four national parks in the Eastern Cape. This maintenance work is in fact in progress and nearing completion. Uh, the maintenance program in our national parks, honorable members, has been uh, very um, successful in actually changing the lives of both participants and also contractors who've worked on the sites. So this program was run over a period of three years in partnership with Sand Parks across all of our national parks. And it actually came from the, uh, a project that was supported through the Presidential Job Summit, but funded through the Department of Tourism. The Titsikama uh, Big Tree Gateway is another project that we implemented in partnership with Sand Parks. And it actually included uh, the, the completion of um, a visitor center, a curio shops, a coffee center, uh, picnic facilities, uh, and an activity center, and then all of the associated bulk infrastructure. Uh, and then we've also included the next slide, um, pictures of the, the completed uh, visitor facilities. I think true to the Eastern Cape, these pictures were taken on the day when the mist was uh, was uh, uh, quite a lot and it was a fairly cold day. But this is pictures of the completed Tsitsikama project that we uh, did in partnership with Sam Park. We now move to the Free State. Um, in the Free State, we actually have uh, four projects that we're doing the provincial maintenance program with. Um, and these projects, the maintenance is expected to commence in quarter two. Um, there are three community projects, the Klokwa Guest House, Freda Fort Dome Interpretation Centre, um, and the um, um, Mononsa Road, which connects a very sacred site. Um, and these projects also, uh, construction is expected to commence in quarter two of this financial year. At the moment, we're in the procurement stage. That projects, uh, These projects are being implemented by the DBSA. Um, the Dinosaur Center is the second of our projects that actually received donor funding from the EU. Um, and uh, with regards to the Dinosaur Center, the construction of the Interpretative Center is complete. And what is currently being uh, finalized is the uh, installation and planning for the exhibition works. We've also included some pictures then of the completed facility. The picture on the top is uh, at the beginning, uh, uh, you know, just before the facility had been completed. So the, the facility is actually meant to become part of the landscape, as you can see, it's lying in the landscape. And then these are just the pictures, one of the outside um, of, of the facility, and then the inside of the facility that shows that uh, a magnificent red mushroom rock uh, in Clarence. Um, so this project, we're looking forward to it being finalized by the end of, of the financial year. 
In Gauteng, there are two projects we're working on. Uh, the first one is at Constitution Hill, and this is the construction of People's Parks project within the Constitution Hill uh, precinct. It actually is creating access to the public and connecting uh, the, the open spaces with the, with the court itself. Uh, the contractor was appointed in February 2022, and the site actually was handed over in March 22. We are expecting that the, the project should be completed by the 30th of September. <laughs> and at this point in time, um, the recruitment, of course, has been completed for EPWP workers, um, and, and the project is under construction. The Sekapos Rand project then is part of our provincial uh, um, maintenance program. And uh, at this point in time, we're just finalizing the scope of work with the province, um, and we're anticipating that um, the maintenance work should commence in quarter two. In KwaZulu-Natal, we have three projects that are implemented uh, by the DBSA community projects. This is Muzipan, the Anton Dembele Museum, and the Amathlubi Cultural uh, Heritage. Um, and these projects construction is expected to commence in quarter two. We then have a number of projects that we're implementing in partnership with Ezembelo. The first of this is the upgrade and expansion of Giants Castle and the reconstruction of the Meander Hut. Um, the construction of the Meander Hut has been completed and work is underway on the expansion of the Giants Castle uh, hiking trail. Um, in Midmar, then, we are doing resort upgrades to uh, various um, of the facilities that are at Midmar. Um, and for the first one, which is the which is the renovations of the Midmar Dam Resorts, the site was handed over to the contract in November 2021, and three chalets have been completed to date. With regards to the roofing project, also at the Midmar Dam Resorts, uh, construction work at the Tendela camp commenced in March 2021, and it's, it's currently sitting at 90% completion. And then construction uh, at the Mtwazi and Hilltop camp has not yet commenced. We can move to the next one. Uh, we're also then implementing in the Universal Accessibility Project in partnership with the um, Ezembelo team at the Lulue uh, Nature Reserve, and that project was, was completed in October 2021. Uh, we are then currently um, also with Tourism uh, Investment KwaZulu-Natal, implementing uh, upgrades to uh, community uh, facilities. Um, there are seven ac accommodation units and then also six tented camps, and aligned with that then kitchen facilities and the associated civil works. The contractor was appointed in August 2021. Um, there were some challenges on this project um, uh, as reported in this uh, document, but I'm also very happy to uh, indicate to honorable members that uh, as of yesterday, uh, the contractor is actually back on site um, and the, the challenges that, that uh, were there have now been resolved. So this project we are anticipating then will be completed uh, fairly shortly. If we can move to the next slide. Also in KZN, uh, we are with TIKZN again, implementing um, renovations to uh, the Lani Hot Springs facilities. And at this point in time, the construction is uh, at 57% completion. Um, with Tourism KwaZulu Natal, we have been working on the Nelson Mandela capture site. There have been some challenges uh, with the procurement uh, as, as it's been run by TK, uh, KZN. And what they've had to do is to re-advertise the tender itself. Um, so the, the, we're, we're basically um, waiting for that um, a new process then to unfold in order to appoint a contractor to complete the scope of work. In Limpopo, honorable members, uh, in partnership with the DBSA, we are implementing 11 uh, community projects at the PD Waterfalls, the Oaks Lodge, Matsila Lodge, uh, Batsonga, Ngobe, Tisane, Nantoni Dam, Chatokwe Game Farm, TTTT uh, Game Farm, the Mapate Recreational Social Tourism Facility, and the Royal, Royal Kalanga uh, Project. 
But these projects, on all of them, we're also anticipating construction to commence in quarter two of this financial year. There are then uh, two uh, national parks uh, where our maintenance program is being rolled out. Uh, and this maintenance program is, of course, currently in, uh, in progress at the Sand Parks facilities. Um, there are five facilities that we are going to implement our provincial maintenance program uh, in partnership, of course, with the province and being implemented by the DBSA. And this work is also anticipated to commence in quarter two of, uh, of this financial year. Um, with regards to the next two projects, they're implemented in partnership with the SANBI, uh, South African National Biodiversity Institute. Uh, the first of the projects is the Toyando Botanical Gardens. Uh, and for this project, the contractor has been appointed and the works are currently underway. The second project has two components. One of the components is in Limpopo, that's the Mokopana uh, Biodiversity Center. And the second project is actually a uh, refurbishment of the ablution facilities at the National Zoological Gardens, which is based then in, in Gauteng. Um, on the project, the contract is uh, being finalized and the site a handover to the contractor will be finalized by the 30th of June. Um, also, in partnership then with Sand Parks, we have three projects uh, that, that we're working on. Uh, the first, of course, is the Shangoni Gate, which is uh, creating a new entrance gate to the National uh, Park. Um, and for this project, the, the processes for the appointment of the contract has been concluded, and site handover should be concluded by the end of June. Uh, similarly, for Palaborwa, um, where we, uh, it's, it's a partial development of the wild activity hub in the Kruger National Park at the Palaborwa Gate. Um, and also uh, the, the, the contract has been appointed and the site handover will take place before the end of June. Uh, with regards to the Mapungubwe group accommodation facilities, we're constructing uh, dormitories um, and uh, kitchen facilities and dining facilities, uh, largely targeting uh, students. Um, we found that in the in the cradle of humankind, the student facilities are very popular um, and in fact account for a significant number of visitors. So this is what this project is about. Uh, to date, what has actually happened is that the detailed bills of quantities have been uh, completed. Uh, the, the project, the professional service provider is actually refining the plans. We actually, um, uh, together with Sand Parks, have looked at budgets. And we have uh, co collectively found enough budget to start the work for 60 sleeper hostel. Uh, but the planning actually is for 120 sleeper hostel. So the, the professional services team then is just actually looking at the scope of work that they put out to tender uh, for the contractor to complete the 60 sleeper facility. Can we move to the next slide? These are then just some pictures, uh, honorable members, so that you can see the work in progress uh, at our national parks. These are, are pictures of our maintenance teams working at the Marikele National Park. Um, next slide, please. And in Pumalanga, we are implementing uh, four um, maintenance projects at uh, provincially owned facilities uh, and the work um, construction uh, let's say maintenance work is expected to, to commence in quarter two. Um, the community-based tourism project in Mpumalanga is at Numbi Gate. There are two elements to this because there are two communities. Um, and uh, at this point, professional services have been appointed and the project is at a planning stage. Next slide. There's a universal access project at the Blade Liver uh, Canyon, which is implemented in partnership with the Mpumbalanga Tourism and Parks Authority. Also on this one, there were some challenges in the procurement um, and the tender had to be re-advertised. Um, so MPTA is currently commencing with the new procurement progr uh, program. Uh, of course, the Kruger National Park uh, falls uh, between uh, Mpumalanga and Limpopo, 
And the maintenance program that we're implementing with the sand parks is also underway uh, in, at this site. This then is just some pictures of the maintenance program underway uh, of our teams uh, in the Kruger National Park itself. In the Northern Cape, we're uh, implementing um, our maintenance program in four uh, sites as well. Um, and the Northern Cape, uh, we're, we're discussing then with the province uh, which of these four sites and the exact scope of work. So at this stage, we haven't yet finalized procurement for a contractor, but we are intending to finalize our discussions with the Northern Cape uh, shortly so that we can actually commence construction on, on sites um, in, in the next quarter. There are two community projects that are uh, part of the work that the DBSA is completing for us. This is the Plattfontein Lodge and the Kamisberg uh, Visitor Center. And uh, for, for both of these, um, construction is anticipated to commence in quarter two. We're then implementing a project, um, which is the Komani San Interpretative Center and Narrative De Development. Uh, this project is in the Khalikhadi Transfrontier Park, and it's the creation of an exhibition and the refurbishment of an interpretative center and all of the development of the narrative for, for that center. Um, at this point in time, uh, the narrative uh, and design planning is complete and where uh, the project itself is estimated to be completed by December 2022. Um, the National Park then a program on maintenance continues and the Tangwa Karoo Park is in, in the Northern Cape. And then in partnership with the Department of Science and Innovation, we are actually uh, going to create a visitor interpretation center um, in Carnarvon um, as part of telling the story of the square kilometer array. Uh, this project is in a planning stage and it's uh, the, the implementing entity is the South African Radio Astronomy uh, Observatory. In the Northwest Honorable Members, there are six sites that we are looking at uh, for uh, our provincial maintenance program. We also are having discussions with this particular province on the, on the sites and the scope of work. And we do hope to finalize these shortly so that the maintenance work can commence in quarter two. There are four community projects being implemented uh, by the DBSA in the province. The Manyane Lodge, the Lotla Mareng Dam, Salt Laiki Museum, and the Lehurutse Liberation Heritage Museum. And um, the, the work, um, um, it should say construction, my apologies, not maintenance. The construction work is anticipated to commence uh, in quarter two uh, of this financial year. In the Western Cape, uh, we are then implementing a number of projects in partnership um, with the province. Uh, the first of that is the Cape Nature uh, Kohama project, and this is the enhancement of facilities at the Kohama Nature Reserve. Um, at this stage, the tender documentation is currently being uh, finalized, and it is anticipated that the tender will be advertised in the second week of July. Um, there are four uh, provincial uh, sites that we are uh, working on, um, Lookout Hill and Kailicha, the Wab Nature Reserve, uh, Volvoclough Nature Reserve, and the Cedarburg Wilderness Area. Um, and this is where we're implementing our provincial maintenance program, which is expected to commence in quarter two. We're also working then in partnership with the Robin Island Museum. Um, and this work is actually uh, the development of the Alpha One visitor um, restaurant and the visitor center, as well as a craft center. The tender for the contractor had to be re-advertised uh, and the site briefing has been conducted. So hopefully there will be the appointment of a contractor shortly so that construction work can commence. There are seven national parks then in the Western Cape and our maintenance program, of course, is underway in all of these seven national parks. Uh, with regards to the Agalis Lighthouse development, uh, honorable members, there were two components. 
The first component was completed some time ago. It's the giant map of Africa and a walkway uh, at the southernmost uh, tip of Africa. Um, and then the second component, which is the development of the lighthouse and the information center, a contractor has been appointed um, and construction uh, commenced in April uh, of this financial year. Thank you very much, honorable members. That concludes uh, the presentation uh, of, of the project. Thank you very much. I don't know if uh, DJ wants to make some remarks. No, no additions, honorable uh, members. No thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Honorable uh, members, I'd like to invite you uh, to, to ask questions. Uh, just before that, uh, DG and uh, DDG and uh, DM, I just want to to find out um, uh, if you can just uh, uh, clarify in terms of uh, uh, particular with regard to DBSA, uh, what uh, monitoring mechanism uh, does the department have uh, in, 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 in terms of monitoring the implementation of the projects? Uh, but also uh, in, with regard to the costs, uh, the cost of each of the projects, um, and also whether DBSA charges a, a, a fee uh, for, for the implementation of the projects. Uh, and and um, also, what is the role of the the provinces, particularly with regard to those uh, projects that uh, uh, are run by uh, DBSA, uh, is there any contribution from the provinces, uh, but also those that are uh, run in terms of the implementing uh, agencies uh, by the provinces, for example, the Eastern Cape uh, ECPTA, what, what is the role of uh, the, the department financially or is it the responsibility of uh, uh, Eastern Cape uh, Parks and Tourism Agency um, together with the provincial government or the, the role uh, of uh, uh, the national uh, uh, department uh, with regard to the, the costs? Because the DM was saying that they, uh, you've asked the, the, the provinces also to make submissions in terms of the, their projects. Uh, so what I want to find out whether uh, the department has a, a role then financially in terms of assisting those uh, uh, provinces. Uh, but also with regard to the Sun Park, the partnership between the department and the Sun Park um, uh, in terms of uh, 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 sharing, uh, is there any, in terms of costs, uh, particular with regard to the, the national parks uh, in each of the province, uh, what is the contribution of Sun Park and that of uh, the, the department uh, uh, financially? Um, but also, the, I think in one of the provinces, uh, I think it's not in Cape, uh, the SKA, uh, that is uh, uh, being uh, coordinated between the department and the department of uh, science and uh, uh, technology and uh, innovation. Uh, in terms of financial contribution uh, with regard to, to those. So I just wanted uh, to, to, to find out uh, uh, with, about that, uh, perhaps, and also the, if uh, we could have maybe a template or matrix in terms of when these uh, uh, projects, in terms of uh, how, when are they going to be handed uh, over. Uh, yeah. Honorable members, I uh, see the Honorable uh, Bosho, uh, Honorable Moimang, in that order, please. Thank you very much, Chair. You've asked many of the questions, um, but I'd just like to know, um, all these projects are put out on tender that we understand, but I'd like to know the tender committee or the adjudication committee, is it one committee or does every province have their own committee? Um, and then I'd like to know, um, we are nearing the end of 2022. We are halfway through the year. And I would like to hear from the department whether they are on track 
to ensure that the projects mentioned will be completed by March 2023. And if we could have an updated report per province on that. And then I'd also like to know if it is found that a contractor is not complying um, with regard to the time given to them, what penalties are in place. And then looking at the community projects, I take it that they are all provided with an occupancy certificate. If this is the case, um, does the department go out and do random checks to see if the projects are viable? Um, because it is a huge investment. And how are these projects maintained? Is it through funding that the community generate generates or does the um, department still help them? Um, then I'd like to find out um, the Skywalk in Mpumalanga. Where do we stand with regard to that? Is the department involved in any way um, or not? If they are, please, if I could just be given some info on that. And then, Chair, as you know, 2020, I think it was, we visited the Howick Falls. And it was in a state of absolute disrepair. Is the um, department involved in this regard to see the upliftment of tourism in that area? And then with regard to the Numbi Gate project, this is absolutely brilliant. Um, thank you for that. But I'd just like to hear from the department whether they have engaged at all with SAPS, because this area is very rife for protest actions. And we've had many tourists on that piece of road being attacked. So we need to ensure that the safety of our travelers, tourists alike, um, are looked after. Then I would like to know the Blider River Canyon. Um, just a correction there, Tabacheu, it's spelled C-H-W-E-U and not with a T. Um, if they are only going to concentrate on the Blider River Canyon, what about all the other um, points of interest in this area? We have... Um, God's Window, we have the Mac Mac Falls, all those type of um, tourist attractions that can be assisted by the department, if they could give us a report on that. And then whilst we at it, to please ask the department to engage somehow with um, provincial roads departments or national road departments, because engaging with a prospective tourists, they refuse to go down there anymore because of the state of the roads. And that is hampering our community projects as well. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Poso. Honorable Moima. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, let me extend a lot of greetings to, to, to Chair and uh, and the honorable members, the minister and the team. Uh, just uh, one, uh, two questions from my side. The first one relates to the uh, the program on the uh, on 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 on, on uh, township township and rural and rural and rural areas. Uh, is there any uh, targeted approach in terms of? Uh, ensuring that there is a, a, a program a dedicated program towards uh, towards uh, villages and township uh, i'm raising this point because i'm looking at, uh, at the northern cape at the northern cape side uh, uh, in terms of uh, the uh, macrada museum it's, 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 a, it's, it's, it's a project that has been there, and definitely my corona plays a very critical role. Uh, and also all these nature reserves, uh, which uh, to a large extent uh, will not be in, in township and villages. Uh, 
hence my question, but I must appreciate the, the work done uh, with regards to platform, platform Dean Lodge, uh, 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 because of the support that you are giving there. Uh, but I'm also a bit, uh, 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 I don't see a narrow hotel, narrow hotel in, in the town of Kimberley. Uh, I think uh, it's, it's, a pro, it's, 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 it's a project that was assisted through the, I think, tourism equity fund, and uh, it's not reflected here. Maybe there could be some reasons. But I think what, what is quite critical is to appreciate the, the role that the department has played in terms of assisting those, uh, those emerging uh, to, to, to tourist, uh, tourism entrepreneurs. Uh, they were also in, uh, in, 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 uh, in the Devon in Dava, and they were quite excited, and my appreciation to the department for, 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 for the assistance that they're giving to those, uh, to those uh, tourist, tourism uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, I'll be much more also uh, interested to get a sense in terms of uh, following on what the chair said around uh, the total, the total, the total uh, budget for these projects. Uh, my, 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 my turn will be on uh, the number of jobs created. It will be important uh, for for the team to probably. Uh, uh, give us more details, even not today, but just give us uh, uh, a sense in terms of how many how many jobs are created uh, uh, from this uh, program. Uh, this is this is quite important because uh, we expect a tourism infrastructure program uh, to play a critical role uh, because it is needed to drive uh, infrastructure. Across across government, but but more than that, it's not only that. Uh, the expectation is that through through this uh, program, uh, it also help in terms of uh, boosting the the uh, capital formation in the tourism industry, uh, with a view to ensure that uh, rural economies uh, uh, does materializes and also promote sustainable and cultural tourism. I'll also be more interested to get a sense in terms of uh, uh, the coordination that, 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 that the department has uh, with the other, 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 other players like the trading industry and competition uh, in terms of uh, capital formation in the tourism area because it's a very, it's a very, it's a very, it's a very critical point because uh, our expectation is that uh, with the sustained uh, uh, expenditure and public investment in the industry, it can boost employment. Hence my question, uh, uh, how many jobs uh, are we creating or have we created? Uh, because uh, it is expected that with this uh, 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 investment, uh, uh, there has to be uh, uh, other role players that are also uh, uh, lending their hand uh, in this. Uh, yeah, but other than that, Chair, I'm, 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 I'm quite happy with the, with the presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Mama. Uh, Honorable Tango? Yeah, thank you very much, Chairperson. Chairperson, uh, the Constitutional Hill Project, is that linked to the number four, the old fort prison? Uh, the prison there is used quite often now by community-based organizations and others to hold meetings, to hold concerts, to hold get-togethers. Is there a link between the Constitutional uh, Hill Project and the Fort Project? Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Perhaps if I can also come back again. Um, oh, no, we you... showed it there. Oh, all right. <laughs> Did you see your head there? Okay, you can come in there, uh, Honorable Shodi. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Good morning, DM, and good morning, everybody. Uh, let me start to thank for presentation, Honorable Chairperson. I've got only two questions, but the first question was asked about Honorable Boshoff, the issue of security. Then my second uh, question, Chairperson, I just want to check with the department to say all these projects that are implemented around all nine provinces, 
Did they consider the issue of gender parity to say maybe they be employed women and youth and people with disability? Otherwise, Chairperson, I'm happy about the, pro the, the project that was raised uh, about the free state because yes, indeed, I know about the project, even the one in 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 a free free fair dome is next to my area, but uh, I think one will go and make a oversight during the constituency. I thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Mashud. Uh, as I was indicating that I'm coming back again. Uh, um, I just want to find out with regard to uh, the slides that uh, talks to the uh, projects uh, uh, that were uh, uh, cancelled. Uh, I see that uh, the Kiwane is also put under that slide. I just want to find out why, because it is said that it was a, a those that those those that have been discontinued. But uh, the, the report says uh, the presentation says. It has been uh, completed uh, by the municipality. Um, the another general question is that to those discontinued uh, projects, is there any way forward of ever uh, reviving them? I'm, I'm worried, especially about uh, uh, Dansani, because <laughs> I grew up there, uh, and I see that. Uh, it's also under those that have been discontinued uh, uh, because of uh, beyond, uh, could not uh, go ahead beyond the, the planning stage because it was too costly and also posed a, ring, a risk uh, uh, to operational uh, sustainability. If I could just get uh, more clarity with regard to that, but also generally, uh, those that have been uh, 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 vandalized. Uh, and, and also to check whether before these uh, projects, is, is there any kind of uh, social facilitation uh, that is done to for the buy-in uh, by community members uh, so that they also uh, protect uh, uh, these uh, uh, these projects. Uh, but also what I want to check uh, uh, the I know that there are these uh, uh, three categories, Honorable uh, uh, DM, uh, that you mentioned earlier, the community-based tourism projects, the maintenance of national parks and provincial tourism assets, uh, destination uh, enhancement initiatives. I just want wondering if uh, uh, maybe the department is not considering maybe another category, uh, that of uh, perhaps uh, uh, partnerships uh, between uh, uh, government and the private sector, because uh, I don't think government alone can be able to uh, uh, deal with all the projects uh, that are, are, are needed, particularly in provinces. Uh, it will require also some partnership between government and the private sector. But I know that with regard to the, uh, the, the, the three categories, a year uh, private sector does not a uh, uh, feature. So I was just checking if uh, perhaps the fourth category that could uh, involve a, a partnership between government and and and, uh, and the private sector. Um, I, I had to ask uh, the question with regard to uh, the, the role of department and uh, uh, particularly provinces, but uh, to to elaborate on that question, uh, there, there are other uh, implementing agencies other than DBSA, uh, Sun Park. Uh, 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 I think my earlier question also would uh, refer to, to the other uh, implementing agencies to what will be the role of the department financial with regard to those. Uh, for example, also Sun B. Uh, but also the question that has been raised by uh, Honorable Ambassador Dango with regard to the constitutional hill. Uh, uh, I suspect that there it will be the Johannesburg municipality, but what will be also whether the role of uh, the department uh, with regard to that. 
Um, those areas, uh, I think there are about three. Um, I think uh, it's a uh, uh, case at end Bumalanga uh, and Western Cape where there was challenges of the uh, uh, procurement. If we could get uh, some details with regard to exactly what were the, the challenges uh, of procurement uh, in those uh, three uh, three uh, three areas uh, that uh, uh, were indicated. Um, I, I just want to also perhaps uh, invite uh, Honourable uh, uh, Protest at uh, DM when we were in, in KZN uh, for the tourism uh, travel in Naba. Um, on the last day, we thought that there was a, a, a program on that day, so we drove uh, to the area that we were directed to. I think uh, the, the program on this day was that they were, the, it's a street where there are a lot of uh, restaurants uh, that we were going to go to. Uh, but we, when we went there, we couldn't find uh, uh, direction, anyone, uh, it was just ourselves, uh, and that uh, private uh, cars, and uh, you know. Then Honorable uh, Tim <laughs> uh, became our tour guide because he comes from uh, 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 Tequini. Uh, and, uh, but the, the tour became kind of like a, an oversight. We went to another, uh, I think it's a, uh, a beach area or harbor. Uh, that's why I want uh, perhaps the honorable uh, team to come in if he's still connected, just to give uh, some details. Because uh, I and I know that uh, the department is not working alone. If the the, the tourism is impacted uh, by another department, then, then there would be discussions. Uh, I know there would be projects that are owned by other departments, but then uh, Department of Tourism will come in to assist uh, a, a particular department. Uh, for example, sports, uh, arts and culture, uh, there would be projects that are owned by that department, uh, but then the, the but, uh, entity will also come in to assist. Uh, so, Honorable uh, team, if you can just elaborate, because we found a place where uh, the hub, at the hub, there's a problem of uh, sewage. Uh, that is affecting the the businesses that are around that uh, harbor, and it's affecting the the the, the tourism uh, in the area. Uh, I think the restaurants around that area are closing uh, down as a result. Um, I don't know if the uh, honorable team is around just to elaborate because he knows the, the the issue better than I do. Honorable team. Jefferson, sorry, my, my internet connection is, is a bit uh, slow here. Um, can you just repeat the question, please? No, I was indicating that, uh, remember the place that you took us to in the harbor where there's a problem of sewage and that is affecting yeah. the restaurants around there and the tourism in general. If you can just elaborate uh, so that perhaps if uh, possible, there could be intervention uh, from the department uh, in partnership maybe with other relevant departments. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chairperson, for the opportunity. Um, yes, the it's an ongoing problem and it's it's an inter it's not an interdepartmental problem, but it, it's gonna require a partnership between tourism, Transnet, and the Etigrini municipality. Because effectively, what's happened is it, it the, the problem traverses all three of their areas. So there is a sewer sewage water, um, sewage plant, which is very close to. If you remember, I took you to that big um, that, uh, that that terminal for for passenger ships. Um, remember that big that very nice facility there. Very close to that. That's that particular sewage works packs up from time to time and it pushes back sewage and that sewage then finds its way into the Durban Harbour, into that area called the Yacht Mole. Um, so that creates a problem. For the First of all, it's an ecological problem, okay, because it, it when you have more sewage in fresh water, it creates more bacteria. And so, and, and, and more algae. 
which then literally sucks the oxygen out of the water, which basically kills off any life that's in the water, which obviously the rotting fish and that also, you know, doesn't help with the, with, with, with the smell. But then obviously the smell itself um, it just basically turns away investors. I mean, or, or tourists, you were, you were there, you saw it yourself, you smelt it yourself that evening. So all the restaurants, there was a place called Wilson's Wharf. It's still there, but it's very, very, almost nobody goes there anymore. That was a big hub of tourism and restaurants there. Not only just restaurants, but lots of little shops where people could buy tourists, you know, um, uh, mementos and that sort of thing was there. And then you have uh, a couple of sporting establishments with people with their boats and that sort of thing that are losing membership terribly because of the problem. And then right across the road from where we were, there are also a number of flats there where residents have unfortunately collected their sewer lines illegally straight into the stormwater drains. And so that sewer, that sewer just pumps just directly into the harbour. So if the Department of Tourism could engage with the Etigrini municipality um, and with Transit and say, how can we as a, as a collective or as an as a inter- into body a team sort this out and this is this is the kind of thing that I was speaking about in the last tourism debate as well is that tourism shouldn't just see itself in a silo as tourism tourism needs to take hands with multiple departments a very good example in Durban is the is the the, the blue flag beaches now che whether we like it or not when tourists consider visiting our country, they look for the blue flag beaches because the blue flag status means that the beaches are clean. It means the water is safe to swim in. Um, if you get some of the water inside your mouth, you're not going to get sick. It also means that it's safe and it's secure, that the ablution facilities are good. And so tourists who don't know our country like we do, they visit our country and they look for those blue flag status beaches and that's where they go. So I was... I would say to the bottom of tourism is where are we reaching out to our municipalities and saying, how can the municipality and the tourism department work together to establish more of these blue flag beaches? Because the more tourists come to a flag, to a beach, because it's it's got an international standard of blue flag, the more shops can start, the more restaurants can stop, the more tourist um, you know, uh, operations can begin in those areas. I'm sure that the the Minister of Tourism or Deputy Minister know exactly what I'm talking about. But I think there needs to be an active engagement with the municipalities to foster tourism. Sorry, Chair, that's a very long answer, but I think that that's, let's just try and widen our scope, that we don't just look at tourism, but we look at all the role players in that tourism uh, chain, you know? Thanks, Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Honourable Tim. Um, I don't know if... Uh... Uh, it's an old hand, uh, Honourable uh, Boshoff, or it's a follow-up uh, question. Chair, if I may just come in again. Okay. Um, with Honourable Brighter say, speaking about Etiquini, um and the problems, something on the lighter side and something good that I heard, and I don't know if the Department of Tourism is going to be involved in it. <laughs> Growing up in KZN, um, I can recall going down to Durban, for holidays and having the rickshaw drivers, inverted commas there, I don't know if you recall anything to that effect. And I've been led to believe that they are going to start operating again. This is an absolutely fantastic initiative, um, community-based initiative that the department can get involved with because it was a huge attraction and I'm sure it can once again become an attraction again. And then just one question that I would like to pose, these interpretation centers and visitor centers, are they um, friendly towards people without sight? Um, Because we find many of these centers being erected, but no um, facilities are available so that they can read themselves, the Braille reading and so forth. If we can just get a feedback on that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, Chair. Uh, 
for sure. Uh, DM, uh, back to you. Uh, you'll uh, then indicate whether I want to come in first or uh, to the DG and DDG, and then maybe you you close. No, thanks, Chair, and thanks, Honourable Members, for the questions. I will will request the DDG to come in, and then the DG. Then I will end. Thank you so much, DDG. Thank you, Honourable Chair and Honourable DM. Um, let me start at the beginning, Chair, with the the the, the, the set of questions that the Honourable Chair asked. Uh, these were related to our monitoring mechanisms for the projects that we run. So each project, uh, Honourable Chair and Honourable Members, has a project steering committee that is established at the beginning of the project. That project steering committee is comprised of the project owners, whether it's a community uh, owners or whether it is actually a, 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 an entity that owns the project, the professional services team, the department, uh, province, uh, local authority, district, municipality. So we try to bring all of the stakeholders together um, in, in that project steering committee. And the project steering committee meets as regularly as is required, depending on what stage a project is in. Um, so that steering committee, for example, would be part of the social facilitation process on each of our projects at the moment, Honourable uh, Chair, uh, where, where uh, we are then trying to, to discuss and negotiate what the actual scope of work is uh, and come to an agreement with, with the various stakeholders on, on how that uh, project will run. Um, so that's the, 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 the mechanism that we usually have with each individual project. At an entity level, uh, in working with the De Development Bank of Southern Africa, uh, we have a technical team uh, that meets every second week uh, with, the, with the DBSA team. And that technical team, um, the committee is chaired by myself. We then look at the project progress and we uh, try to resolve any issues that might have arisen in the process. Um, and then there is a... Um, a monthly at this point steering committee that is chaired by the DG uh, and the, the, the chief executive responsible for infrastructure development at the DBSA. Um, and that then looks at, again, at uh, the, the project oversight. It receives a report. And if there are any matters that need to be escalated and then addressed at that level, that's the, the, the monitoring uh, process uh, that we run. The DBSA um, Honourable Chair um, actually does charge a fee for their services. They have a sliding scale uh, that they utilise, um, which uh, runs between um, 6 uh, and, and, and 9 percent, depending on the scale of projects. So the, the way the DBSA operates is that the larger the projects, of course, the lower the, uh, the amount that they charge for their services. Um, and the, the smaller the projects, the higher the, the, the percentage is. Uh, you know, that's economies of scale, uh, Honourable Chair. Uh, but, and, and it's based on the budget. So we, we do pay them a, a fee for their services, and it's a percentage-based fee. Um, and, and it is actually depending on, on the cost uh, of the projects. Um, Honourable Chair, with regard to the cost of the projects, we didn't include all of them um, in, in this particular presentation, primarily because many of them are actually at a procurement stage. Um, and we, we don't want to compromise the procurement process in, in, in any way uh, by disclosing the, the costs of the project. So we do have costs per project. Uh, you know, some of them are indicative costs. But until we actually appoint contractors, we don't have the final cost. We should have the final cost for each project once we've appointed uh, the contractors. With regard to the, the partnership then between ourselves and various entities, um, the department actually does part fund some projects. Uh, and some projects it actually does fully fund. So the maintenance program, for example, Sandparks has a maintenance budget which they utilize for their national parks, there was a shortfall in that maintenance budget. And so the portion that the department provided then supplemented uh, the work being done uh, in, in sand parks. 
Similarly, for example, on the Shangoni Gate, uh, the Palaborwa Hub, and Mapangubwe, there's part funding from Sand Parks on that project and part funding from ourselves. There are other projects, though, um, Honorable Chair, where we, the department might actually fund the full amount, depending on the scope and, and scale of it. Um, and that is different uh, uh, per entity. But the, the important thing is that the department actually doesn't own any of these facilities across the country. Um, and so we must work in partnership with the owning entities, which are either communities or uh, you know, provincial or national entities, or in some instances, uh, the, the private sector. Um, Honorable Chair, you are correct uh, that Kiwani was in fact completed. The reason that it is included on the slide um, that is discontinued projects is from an accounting perspective. The department didn't complete the work on that project. So on our books, we, we actually record it as a project then that we discontinued. Uh, that's the reason that it continues to actually uh, um, be on, on that particular slide. Um, and then I think I have responded to the question of social facilitation. We did inherit many projects, uh, Honorable Chair, um, when the department became a Department of Tourism in 2009. But on the projects that we're now implementing, there's certainly social facilitation. And that's important from two perspectives. One is to actually agree on the scope of work, but more importantly, it's to get buy-in for the work that needs to be done uh, and ownership beyond the, the construction of, of the project itself. Um, we do have a program then, um, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, um, where we actually are doing investment facilitation. And in our investment facilitation work, where we have a, um, um, you know, a, 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 a pipeline of nationally prioritized projects, we do work with both um, the public and the private sector, both in supporting the work. So we work with DFIs and private investors, but we also work with uh, uh, project owners that are from the public and the private sector to try and support uh, the work uh, that they're doing. Um, so we do work um, in, in, in both uh, those areas. Uh, Honorable uh, Boshoff, um, your questions regarding a tender committee, each project has its own tender committee. So um, those tender committees, uh, as they would be set up, are set up then by the, the specific entity that's managing that. And the tender committees are actually run per project. Um, uh, th there isn't a single committee. Um, th there are multiple ones, and they are, in fact, uh, uh, project-based. Uh, um, with regards to if a contractor is found uh, non-compliant, um, the, the actual uh, stipulations then of the contract itself uh, come into effect, uh, honorable uh, member. Um, and uh, what happens is that the, the contractor is usually given the opportunity to remedy a, a, a problem. Um, and if after a stipulated time frame, uh, the, the problem itself is not being remedied, then of course the, the um, implementing entity uh, enforces uh, the stipulations of the contract uh, to actually uh, impose uh, penalties. Um, and on a number of our projects, we, we have had, um, you know, where there have been challenges, those clauses have in fact been invoked. Um, indeed, uh, compliance certificates are issued at the end of, um, of every uh, project. Um, and uh, for, uh, in particular, the community projects, um, uh, uh, Honorable uh, Boshoff, uh, we are currently working uh, with uh, the um, owning entities and project stakeholders to look at a long-term sustainability plan uh, per project. Um, and we do then actually uh, work with, uh, with, with those entities beyond the project uh, to assist them, uh, depending on the time frame of the, the actual uh, sustainability plan. Um, with regard then to the specific uh, project that is the um, um, uh, Universal Accessibility Project uh, in the Blade River Canyon, 
I can confirm, in fact, that that project does encompass four sites, which is God's Window, the Pinnacle, the Three Rodavals, and the Potholes. So the work that we're doing on that project does, in fact, cover all of those uh, those various sites. Uh, with regard to the to the questions of safety, I think um, raised both by Honourable uh, Boshoff and Honourable Mushodi, uh, we do have within the department a, a different program which deals with uh, safety and support for our tourists, um, and that program does liaise uh, quite closely with the South African Police Services. Um, to actually look at various uh, tourism um, areas across the country um, and working with the, uh, in close partnership with the SAPS has created a network then uh, that looks at safety and security uh, for, for um, uh, visitors. Um, and, and, and then uh, with regards to, to the uh, issues uh, raised by the Honorable Chair, um, uh, and uh, Honourable Bardestet uh, regarding the, um, the the sewage uh, matter in the um, in in KwaZulu Natal. I think uh, Honourable Chair also post uh, the, the floods in KwaZulu Natal. There are, uh, as you will be aware, a number of challenges reported around the bulk infrastructure. But we will certainly engage with the province uh, and Etiguini um, on the matter and and provide uh, assistance. Uh, uh, whatever assistance we can uh, to to the specific issue related uh, uh, to the harbour itself. Um, the Skywalk project, uh, Honourable uh, Boshoff, uh, is in fact a, a, um, a project that is um, run by the province, but there is also a private partner uh, that is, has been given the, the concession, of course, to create the Skywalk project. We are working with both the province and the private sector partner um, and supporting them from an investment facilitation uh, perspective uh, on, on uh, this uh, particular uh, project. Um, Honorable uh, Moi Mang, uh, once we, we have uh, made the appointment of our contractors, we would then be able uh, to be in the position to provide you with the number of jobs created. Uh, it's an important element um, uh, uh, as the, the project is, of course, funded through our expanded uh, public works program. Uh, and Honorable Mashodi, we certainly do, uh, because it's a requirement of the expanded public works program, look at gender parity, um, also uh, the employment of youth and people with disabilities within our infrastructure program. Um, with regard to uh, capital um, um, investment, um, we do, um, uh, Honorable Moi Mang, work with other entities of the state, uh, in particular the DTIC, um, and in particular Invest uh, South Africa, uh, as well as the uh, entities which are the DFIs, the IDC, um, um, and uh, to look at how we actually fund uh, in the long term our, our investment program. Um, that work also falls within the destination development branch, but is, uh, is, is led by a team then responsible for uh, investment uh, promotion. Um, Honorable uh, Dango, my, my, my uh, geographical knowledge of Constitution Hill is not as good as yours, uh, but the, the project itself, um, uh, which is the, the park, actually is at the bottom end of Constitution Hill, and it does connect uh, Constitution Hill uh, and the court itself, which is, which is a bit higher up, with the actual uh, community that surrounds the area. So, so the park itself is conceived uh, to be the connection between the, the surrounding communities and the Constitution Hill precinct itself. It is part of the Constitution Hill uh, uh, precinct. Um, uh, itself. Um, and then I think um, Honorable Portisette, you are quite correct. Uh, the department does in fact uh, support the Blue Flag Beach program and, and you are correct. When, when visitors do look at our country, they do look at uh, these elements of, of work uh, that, that give them some kind of assurance uh, that what they, they're visiting is, is the correct uh, site that they're visiting. Um, also, interestingly, uh, honors, Honorable uh, Brett said, 
uh, as part of the um, Blue Flag Program. We also did recognize as a department um, that there were some blue flag beaches that had lost their status uh, for a number of reasons, um, mainly uh, because the maintenance and upkeep of, of those spaces had not really been um, you know, uh, uh, done as well as they should be uh, by local authorities concerned. So the department also then did support something called the Green Flag Program. And the Green Flag Program was um, to support uh, beaches that weren't necessarily yet at blue flag status, but to help them to actually improve um, in terms of what they were doing in terms of maintenance um, in order to actually meet the, the, the blue flag standard. Um, uh, honorable Chair and Honorable Members, I, I believe that I've answered most questions. Um, the, the only question I can see that I haven't yet is related to townships and, and rural areas. Um, in our approach, um, honorable uh, members, you will note that all of the community projects that we're running are in fact um, in rural areas. It's part of our deliberate strategy uh, around actually uh, making sure that we diversify the, the product um, and that we actually create a product where there is existing tourism potential uh, in the country. Um, and uh, th that's our strategy. Um, some of the, the work that we're currently doing um, in our APP, as we presented uh, to the Select Committee, is then looking at uh, work uh, in various townships across the country. But rural areas certainly and townships um, are our focus but only in instances where these actually represent a very high tourism potential um, in, in the country, because of course, honorable members are, are very well aware that the country is vast uh, and, and the department um, invest in, 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 in particular areas um, uh, where we think that there's the highest tourism potential. Um, however, other projects, uh, Honorable Chair, to your question about projects that we might have discontinued, um, other levels of government um, and the private sector, of course, uh, may well continue with those projects, uh, just because we as the department have uh, discontinued our involvement in those projects doesn't actually prevent um, uh, the various levels of government uh, or the public and private sector from actually then continuing with them. Uh, I'm going to stop there. Uh, I, I think uh, I've uh, responded to most of those questions, um, uh, honorable uh, chair and honorable members. Um, I, I think I will hand over to the DG. Uh, if there are any that I have not responded to, um, uh, I'm happy to come back to them. Uh, thank you, honorable chair. Thank you. Just before the DG comes in, uh, uh, honorable Pratase. Yes, Jay, thank you very much, um, and thank you for that response. Um, just two things. First of all, the, the sewer problem in, in, the, in the Durban Harbour, and maybe you want to make it, a, it's, it's the primary, it's called, the, it's the area called the Yacht Mole. So it's where all the, all the yachts are moored, and the, the specific places that are affected are Wilson's Wharf, if you can make a note of that, Wilson's Wharf, um, the Point Yacht Club, and the um, the, the the Natal Yacht Club and also a place called Cafe Fish. Um, that problem has been ongoing for years and years and years, <clears throat> and long before the floods. Long before the floods, it's not a flood problem. In fact, that area didn't really suffer much flood damage at all. So that is a problem. And and so the question I'm asking is, and maybe it's just for you to take away and, and ponder, but what pressure is the department putting on the city? So is the department literally writing a letter to the mayor, to the speaker, to the MM saying, look, you've got massive tourism potential around the harbor, but you're messing it up because you're allowing sewer to, sewer water to flow into the harbor, creating a terrible stench, and as a result, tourists won't come. And then writing the same letter to Transnet and saying, Transnet, you're responsible for all the ground in the harbor. What are you doing to make it more tourism friendly? That's the kind of pressure I was hoping the department could put on that state-owned entity and also on that municipality to say, come on, guys, let's let's get this going well. 
And then just another little, just a quick one, just an idea, Chair, that I know works very, very well in another country in the world. Um, colleagues here may be aware of, if you visit France, they have a thing called the Michelin Guide. I think it's sponsored sponsored by their tire company, Michelin, and they have a star rating system. So if you arrive in France at the airport, you can actually, or at the first information kiosk, you can buy a Michelin Guide. You can buy a Michelin Guide for France itself as a whole country, or you can buy it for Paris, or you can buy it for any small town or any sort of larger town in, in the region has a, has a Michelin Guide. And the way that Michelin Guide works is if it's got a one star, so one star Michelin um, uh, rating, you know that it's it's an okay, it's an all right, it's an every tourist tourist destination. If it's if it's got a two star, it's a much better one. And if it's got a three star, it's like the top of the top. It's the absolute best thing you can possibly visit. And and so you don't waste your time going around to if you want to go to France and look at Roman ruins, for instance, you go to the three star Roman ruins and you go to the really impressive ones. And you don't go to a, a pile of bricks somewhere. <laughs> it looks like nothing. And the whole idea of that is that it really helps tourists navigate their way through a country. And I was just thinking while we were talking, what what is the department not to establish a pro tier guide? And we we rate everything from let's say one to five or even one to three. So that when tourists come here, they can buy the pro tier guide at the airport and then they can see these are the really top things to go and see in South Africa. And let me tell you now, these Michelin guides rate everything, restaurants through to monuments, through to parks, through to swimming pools, every single thing that the tourist may be interested in has got a rating. And that really helps uh, tourists navigate their way through a country and really, especially if they're here for a short period of time, to go and see the best things. And I'd, I've never seen a pro tier guide or something like that. And I really think that it would be quite innovative and could really bring us up to standard in terms of our foreign visitors. Thank you very much, Jen. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Brotherset. Maybe, DBJ, before you respond to Honorable Brotherset's question, uh, just to uh, add my three questions uh, uh, I just want to check if uh, you remember uh, in the APP uh, under your program also indicated uh, uh, Villa Kazi Street, I think, and the uh, Halish I don't know if they are part of the 99 projects uh, that you're reporting about. And uh, also, I just wanted to find out with regard to how, how much uh, comes from the presidential uh, employment uh, uh, stimulus project as well as the EPPWP uh, uh, and, uh, and also the donor, because uh, you, ha you have these uh, three uh, categories of funding. Uh, but I know in the annual report under uh, donor, the, we said none uh, in the 2020, uh, 2021 uh, annual report. So it, as you respond to uh, Honorable Brata said, if you can also uh, touch on the three questions of uh, ask me two questions of ask uh, back to you DDG before DJ. Uh, thank you um, honorable chair I, I I think that I um, take um, uh, honorable Brad sets um, uh, recommendations and and suggestions we do of course uh, have a grading system um, but, but you know the, the the grading system, of course, um, has now looked at more than just accommodation, um, and and I think that it, uh, the the suggestions it's a useful suggestion, honourable brother said, um, and and then with regard to the detail um, of the the specific uh, challenges and the actual uh, infrastructure challenges uh, of sewage, thank you very much for that clarity. Um, we do from time to time, of course, follow up with, with various uh, entities, Honorable uh, Brotherset. Um, I, I don't recall just off the top of my head if we have followed up on this specific issue, but we certainly will uh, then liaise with our, with our counterparts at province um, and at the local authority uh, with, with regard to this matter. Um, uh, Honourable Chair, I think our EPWP budget, of course, is contained within the uh, with the annual report. Um, we did receive um, um, 90 million in funding for the infrastructure uh, work 
um, uh, from uh, from the um, uh, national uh, from the presidential employment stimulus, uh, and there was also uh, an amount of money that we received also for the safety monitors. Um, so the 90 million is just specifically to the infrastructure work. And then with regards to the donor funding that we'd received, um, the Dinosaur Interpretation Center received an amount of 120 million. Um, and the uh, Bavians Clough uh, project received an amount of uh, 57 million um, uh, for, for the work. Um, um, and then I, I do note, Honorable Chair, through you, that there was a question from Honorable Member Bosov that I didn't respond to. And that question was around the Howick Falls work. So we, we had been working um, with the local authority because they had a plan around Howick Falls and they'd set up a, uh, a committee um, that was actually then looking at that uh, overall plan uh, for the Howick Falls uh, precinct. Uh, we are aware uh, though at the moment that the Howick Falls uh, since the floods has been closed off. So um, the, the, there was a plan, uh, Honorable Member Bosov, around how it falls, and we were working with the local authority on that committee. Um, and, and uh, you know, there may now need to be a new plan uh, that takes into account what's happened subsequent uh, to that. So, Honorable Chair, I'm going to stop there uh, and, and through you then hand over to the DG. Thank you very much, DG. DG? Uh, Honourable Chairperson, I think DDG should still uh, respond to the Lagazi and Khalishu before I come in. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank, <laughs> thank you, uh, Thank you, Honourable Chair. Sorry, <coughs> it's a long list. Um, indeed, Honourable Chair, um, the, the Khalishiwe, Mdansane, uh, and Bilakazi are part of the, the precincts that we are working on. We haven't included it in this uh, particular uh, uh, presentation because those are conceptual at this point in time. And the department has not yet made a decision to fund the actual infrastructure development because we are at a planning stage. Um, so that's the reason that those aren't necessarily included here, uh, Honorable uh, Chair. Once we actually have a look at the outcome of the planning work that we're doing, which is more detailed planning, um, and we have then negotiated with our various uh, uh, stakeholders that are involved in it, um, those projects are possibly likely then to proceed uh, in, into the next phase. And then they will find expression. Um, the, the projects that we have here are ones where we have agreed to the funding and actual construction and or maintenance and upgrading uh, is in place. Uh, thank you for that reminder, uh, um, DG. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you so much, DG. Thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, thank you, Honorable Members, for, for the questions. Honorable Chairperson, uh, most of the responses have been provided. I do want to just underscore the, the, the issue that um, Honorable Tim raised uh, with regards to quality assurance. I think there's a, there's a policy element to it. So, so at the moment, we, we, we will not necessarily be able to, 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 to say which direction, uh, but but we take note of it. I do think as the processes around the revision of uh, the, the white paper and the, 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 the policy uh, discourse unfolds, uh, these are some of the, the things that can then be submitted through such processes, but but we, we take note of that. What, what we have picked up though um, over time is that being a, a destination that is pretty much still at a development stage, you, you do want to expose as much as you possibly can uh, and across uh, the various provinces and so on. So there's got to be some way of ensuring that you, you do not in the process disadvantage others. I'll give you an example. Uh, we used to have challenges with uh, messaging from uh, some some municipalities messaging sometimes even from some provinces where they would go as far as saying 
well, this part of our province is the best you could come to because it's a part of South Africa that does not have malaria. Now, now someone who doesn't come from South Africa immediately thinks that South Africa is actually an area that has got all these malaria zones and so on. And, and it's almost like this is a slight negative message that is coming through whilst the intention is actually the positive message. But we have taken note of, uh, of, of um, the, the, the proposal and it does work well uh, where it's actually been being implemented, but uh, th those processes would, would then unfold. The, the other issue, uh, we, we have a, uh, let me go to, to the issue of what happened with the procurement. Um, we, we've got feedback coming from these various implementing agents, uh, this the Malanga and uh, and 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 uh, and, and uh, uh, KZN, and what they were saying to us is, you would have a tender advertised. After it has been advertised, uh, the bidders come on board, and you go through the entire process. During the process, all the documents are in order. This will be. Uh, typically documents that that uh, have got a life lifespan. So it would be things like your B certificate, it would be uh, things like your tax clearance certificate and so on. And at the time when uh, the award is uh, supposed to be made, they go back and check that everyone's documents are still in order. And in the event that the person or the company that is being recommended does not necessarily have validity of their documents at that particular point in time. They do give them an opportunity to say, do correct this because you entered within uh, this, you entered the process when all these things were actually valid. But they give a certain time frame, and if that time frame is not adhered to, then the whole thing would then lapse if there wasn't. Uh, an alternative uh, bidder that would also be deemed to be uh, capable of executing the same function. So, so when that happens, unfortunately, it means the whole process has to start afresh. And those are some of the problems that the, the, the agents were reporting back to us uh, in terms of what the challenges were. With regards to the 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 the, the specificity on Numbi Gate, um, Honorable Boshoff, we do have uh, tourism monitors at the Numbi Gate. We've got them inside uh, under the stewardship of St. Parks, uh, but they are actually uh, tourism monitors from the Department of Tourism. And we also have them outside the gate uh, working with the community. So that, that has been provided for. And as DDG said, we, we do have uh, a, a, a memorandum of um, uh, understanding, which uh, in fact is a memorandum of agreement between ourselves and the South African Police Services. And we have designated uh, uh, champions to work on uh, the safety issues together, uh, including awareness, but also uh, issues around uh, training of these monitors and uh, issues around just making sure that there is uh, exchange of uh, information and so on. But it goes even beyond that where we are also uh, working with uh, the, 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 the colleagues in the, in the prosecution authority so that there could be a sense of uh, agency in dealing with uh, the cases and so on, but also uh, the fact that when a person has already gone back to uh, their 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 home country, they they it doesn't mean that's the end of the case. Then there could be uh, virtual uh, 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 processes that would still uh, continue to make sure that these cases are seen to finality and so on. So that that's something that is also uh, really being given uh, attention. Honorable um, Chairperson, it's, it's unfortunate that uh, the, the project uh, from your your home township uh, was 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 uh, we were not able to continue with it. But in the main, the, the real challenge is when 
the outcome of the feasibility study says um, this is not going to sustain. So you, you, if you proceed with it, you are proceeding with um, a white elephant, knowing very well that it is actually going to be, and and then that that could create challenges in terms of uh, wasteful expenditure and all those kinds of things. Uh, so, in some instances, it's about the scale and the nature of things that uh, are being uh, considered, uh, because the smaller and 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 uh, somewhat. Uh, Things that are in, in, you know, that can be able to draw people in without necessarily because everyone wants to have some sort of accommodation uh, and so on, and that's that's not necessarily the route that that would uh, enable us to fully develop the destination. We need attractions. We need other products that are not necessarily offered elsewhere, and all those things that we have to do, we must ensure that we are doing them uh, in a manner that. Ultimately, uh, there will be sustainability uh, with regards to the, the initiatives themselves. I, I we, we, like DDG said, we, we are going to provide information about employment, but just to give an example, uh, if, if you take the, 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 the dinosaur project in Free State, the Golden Gate, not far from it, there would be uh, the Coco Guest House. And up the, the, the road, then there would be uh, the, the Vesisok uh, Lodge that is already operational. Um, and others within that particular vicinity. But what we are told out of the feasibility study is that that center would be able to increase the visitation into the area by no less than 55,000 people per annum. Now, these are 55,000 people coming from outside the, the, the district municipality, so to say, largely. Um, and it means they are going to need accommodation there. It means they are going to need food there. Um, they are going to need fuel. They are going to need, and the list goes on. Um, and there will also be um, narration of uh, the, the stories about the center itself, about the, the essence of the center, but also about the community within uh, that, that particular vicinity. And over and above that, you would still have, so those are uh, your, your, your tour guides and so on that would be able to actually take care of that. But you would also have specialized kind of tourist guides that would be telling the, the paleontological story within that particular area. Um, and, and, and beyond that as well, you will be having facilities there, food and bath and so on, and you will also be having memorabilia and all those kinds of things. So there is, is a whole host of activity that would then enable all these transactions that they themselves would also enable the need for people to ensure that such is service. So, so those are things that I'm trying to show that there will definitely be employment that will take place within that, but there will also be um, activation of uh, you know, a lot of people actually getting into entrepreneurship, uh, including those that might decide you know, um, to, to host some of the people in terms of their homestays, but also the extension of the story into the community beyond just within the center itself. So, so those are some of the, 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 the real value uh, aspects because what we want is beyond the construction. The first part, which is fine, is directly funded by government and government will then uh, make sure that through EPWP there are jobs that people are getting for that particular opportunities uh, for that particular period. But beyond that particular period, when the sustainability and when there is uh, a real business actually taking place. That's what we are really after uh, across all the things that we are actually developing in terms of this, uh, this particular, this particular, this particular projects that, that we have highlighted. Um, I, I think honorable Mimang's um, uh, questions, um, the, the, the aspect of 
the Nari Lodge, as an example, it was developed uh, through uh, the, 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 the Tourism Transformation Fund that we have got with, uh, the, 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 with the National Empowerment Fund. Uh, it's a separate program, but that's, that is dealing with uh, uh, issues of incentives and so on. Um, so, so you can say the same in Mpumalanga, uh, the Hraskop uh, gorge lift was developed through that. So those are uh, incentives to stimulate uh, investment and, and Nari Lodge, uh, rather hotel, comes in as an investment that has actually come from that. Um, uh, Hraskop gorge lift comes from that and there are others as well that have actually come from that. So, so probably that... Um, and 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 the likes of your TEF and so on would somewhat uh, come to this category that Jefferson you mentioned about what is the you know this private uh, and public where uh, even beyond uh, what the DDG indicated where we provide uh, investment uh, facilitation support uh, also being able to ensure that. Uh, they, 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 those that actually don't have any form of collateral, but they've got very viable uh, ideas and they also have the capacity to run these things uh, sustainably, uh, are able to get into, into that particular space, but particularly as private individuals, as opposed to uh, the ones that belong to communities or where government is uh, involved in part. So those those we still continue with there there are there are uh, some modalities that that we use uh, separate from these particular ones and and indeed uh, uh, so we, we i think we we must emphasize this point about gender parity um across all our programs on um it's a big emphasis it's a very very big emphasis uh, both uh, gender but also youth empowerment uh, so we make sure that as we implement whatever we implement in this aspect, does not actually lag behind. I will stop the honorable chairperson and then over back to the deputy minister. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, DG. Uh, just before the DM comes in, because I would like uh, uh, him to make comments, but also make uh, uh, closing remarks. Uh, but before that, I would like to check with the honorable members if. Uh, there are any follow-up question? I saw earlier the hand of uh, Honorable Dango. Uh, but if uh, other Honorable members have a follow-up question, they can also raise their hands. I take it that uh, Honorable Tim, it's an old hand. Because it's been there <laughs> since... Yes, yes Dango. Dango. what did I call it? Then? A legacy hand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Honorable Dango? Uh, Chairperson, mine was also a legacy, and but however, you provoked me <laughs> in in, in oh, what you sorry. were saying, <clears throat> particularly around Villa Kazi Street. If uh, the uh, department can actually engage with the National Mandela Foundation regarding the house in Villa Kazi Street, I think it will be important. I think the other issue that becomes important is the question of a, a, to a conferencing tourism. And conferencing tourism in Gauteng could be something that we should look at more seriously. And maybe Gauteng should not be as isolated as it is only having one project on the, on the go. I should encourage them to get more involved with the department to get more projects on the go. I'm talking about the Lim Farm particularly. The Lim Farm has got conferencing facilities for small conferences and could be used. Um, and I think if tourism could look at that, it would be a very good thing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I don't know if uh, DG or DDG want to respond on that uh, before uh, DM comes in. Honorable Chairperson, thank you. We, and I do think there's a question that we had missed that, that, that you had raised. With the constitutional year, and I'm, I'm remembering this because on yes. the yes. we with, with the constitutional hill, we we are working directly with uh, constitutional year, the, the entity itself. Um, so so all of it is with that entity. 
Um, and then with the, the, the Villa Gaza Street, um, we, we, there, 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 will, there will be matters of cooperative governance that uh, we'll have to go through. Um, uh, we've been emphasizing that you know, we, are, we work as, as one government, um, so, but we play different roles. Um, they, there will be aspects of certain authorizations. There will be aspects of uh, land uh, uh, access to, to, to land parcels in and around that area, uh, all of which would be at a local sphere of governance. And, and, and that, that will require for us to be able to move forward uh, properly. Um, and, and as we continued working on this thing, it's been you know, all spheres trying to see how best we can actually get, uh, get the, the site right. I mean, in the, the most immediate things that we wanted to do at that time was uh, the public ablation facilities for uh, the patrons as they come in there. We, we wanted to have uh, uh, proper retail sites for uh, the, the, the people that are actually selling their, their, their crafts and so on. Um, and and they, they expand as, as, as we, we, we go in terms of uh, sites for uh, possibilities of uh, performances and so on. And there were also aspects of, of, of safety. We're talking about a, a satellite uh, uh, presence. Uh, from from the side of uh, the Orlando police station, so, so these are the kinds of things that 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 were part of it. But I'm saying um, it, it, there will be other roles that, as a department of tourism, we may not be able to 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 do. Um, but once those things have been finalized, and I'm taking that collectively as government, that we will have to work on those as as government, all of us. Uh, 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 so that we are able to get past that that particular that particular planning phase and be in a position to actually bring all these things that 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 we're talking about. Part of it, and I'm just sharing this so that we are able to demonstrate that there has been a lot of uh, thinking and work that has gone into it. Part of it is also how uh, the the surrounding um, BNPs there's a. Even some some group of uh, of ladies that are, are, are owners of of some of those BNBs in the area, um, I've met with them a few times to go and look at what are the issues and so on, um, and how how do they best position such that you know we don't go in there, um, uh, enjoy the dining at any of the restaurants in the area, and then move from there go back to wherever one came from when there is these facilities that are right in the area and how then do we actually bring them on board as well. So those are some of the things that we would look into and so on. We do work well with uh, the, the foundation um, and and uh, from time to time, I mean, there's also questions about um, the, 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 the house down the road. Uh, uh, at Bishop Desmond Dutu's house, uh, which is is right down the road, and there hasn't been any any hype around that and so on. So there, there's a couple of of things that have got to be looked into. The good thing is that the facilities, in terms of uh, tourism attractions, whether it's the museums that are there and so in and around that present, they're in a good shape, in a good state, uh, and there's good flow of traffic to that environment. Uh, which which says a lot, uh, but we need to look into this. We hope as the sporting activities return to to normality and so on, uh, Orlando Stadium uh, would also then bring back the the glory days of, uh, of 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 the street and the surrounds and the surrounds, so that we could actually be able to to get it to where it used to be. Uh, but but we we have taken note. Uh, we've taken note in the conferencing facilities and so on. Um, all these discussions uh, that sometimes you would see honourable chairperson that are taking place, uh, whether it's about Lily's Leaf going something going on there, and whether it's the house uh, in Lagasse Street something going on. 
we are somewhere there in the background involved in those discussions. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, DG. Uh, uh, DM, as I indicated earlier, you uh, make comments, uh, but also uh, closing remarks. No, the, the thanks, Chair, uh, and the thanks, honorable members, for for the uh, engagement, uh, questions, suggestions, and input. As the teachers indicated, some of the some of the suggestions are policy related matters, which, as honorable members are aware, that we are in a process uh, of. Uh, reviewing the the white paper, uh, the 1996 white paper. Uh, so some of the suggestions uh, can be thrown into into that discussion, uh, which which at some point, therefore, if if, if there is consensus on them, uh, might then become part of the policy position that uh, would have been taken. Uh, just general to to make comment on to, to, they've covered all the, the the questions substantially. Just to emphasize some few. One is about the issue of of tourism safety. Uh, we we are equally concerned about the tourist uh, safety for our tourists. Uh, that's why, as the DG has indicated. Uh, in 2019, we, we entered into a memorandum of, of agreement with South African Police Service uh, to try and create a safer environment for our tourists. We, as indicated, deploy tourism monitors in all the key tourism attractions uh, points. But, but as, you, as you might be aware, uh, that the the criminals sometimes they they have realized that and uh, most of the attacks like the the one at Numbi Gate uh, takes place along the road. Uh, they try to target uh, tourists along the road, not necessarily in the in the spot where we have deployed our our tourism monitors. So that's why, therefore, the, the partnership with the police, the constant monitoring of our tourism routes, a patrolling by South African Police Service, therefore, becomes a very important as part of creating that safer environment. The, the issue of the state of the route, as honorable members will recall, that during the presentation of the APP, it's one of the issues that we raise is one of the of some of the inhibitants towards access uh, because some of the road infrastructures are not in a very good state that are along the, the tourist the route attractions areas. Uh, we it's a matter that it's, it's 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 we need to keep on engaging because most of these roads are mainly provincial roads. Uh, that are in that state of their affairs. So we we'll have to see a mechanism how to engage provinces so that they're able to prioritize uh, some of these tourism routes as part of this process of uh, economic recovery. Uh, it will require that uh, the road infrastructure are put in a state that enables access uh, in the process. The, as indicated, we, we, we most of this project, if not on all of these projects, uh, from a departmental point of view, we don't we don't we don't we don't own them. They are mainly products that are either community owned or by owned by other agencies, uh, and therefore, but they are of attractions and nature hands our involvement in making sure that we maintain them, keep them in good shape where it is practical possible. But most of these projects are community-based projects. Once completed, uh, we hand over to communities to be able to run them, them, those projects themselves. 
So we, we don't have any product that is, is owned by ourselves as a department. Mm. Uh, and therefore, uh, we, 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 we work with communities, we work with the various departments uh, to make sure that we keep this infrastructure to be in good shape. The, the, the issue of the jobs that are being created and the amount is reflected, as indicated by the DTG. Maybe what you can, can do, DG, is that those projects that you have already, that are already running, that you've already awarded, that are under construction, or maybe those are the ones that we need to categorize and be able to provide a, a committee. Uh, with the with the cost and 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 the, and the jobs created uh, in terms of categorization of youth, women, and people with disability uh, in those projects that are already in the implementation stage where awarding has been done, construction is taking place. Uh, and then and then and then wait so that we don't wait until all of them are awarded. Uh, be able to continuously update the uh, the committee uh, on what has been awarded, what are the costs involved uh, uh, in terms of like the the the, the one in the in the free state, for example. Uh, it's, it's 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 about to be completed. We know what are the costs and all those things. Just using that one as an example. So we can categorize those that already are under constructions. Awarding has been done. Whether they find, what 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 costs are there, and then what jobs are being created, and then then we'll keep on updating the, the information as 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 projects gets awarded and gets implementations, and then. Um, let let me let me let me let me conclude, Chair, by saying we, we take note of the of the issues that a Honorable Protestant has raised around the issue of the challenges of the sewer system in the in the in the Tewini Metro. Uh, we'll we'll have to investigate that and see how do we engage the relevant authorities. Uh, to be able to attend to this matter, uh, uh, to be able to create that uh, situation that in, in, in will enable I mean, tourism to thrive in those areas. As the DTG has indicated, we do have a blue flag program uh, that we are implementing as a department uh, so that we make sure that our beaches, our our break, our, our beaches are are meeting the, the standards of a blue flag uh, so that you create, you make sure that uh, you create an environment that enables that when tourists come into our beaches, uh, they are sure that uh, they are very clean, they are safe, they, are they meet all the environmental requirements. Uh, maybe to make a correction, Chair, in the presentation on slide 26 in relation to Andambumalang. That is the SS Kosana Nature Reserve. It's in Tembisile Ani, a local municipality in Tangala district, not at Alice Mutualeti, Sikukun, but that is in Limpopo. Uh, if we can just make that correction, uh, chair, for record purposes, so that it, it, it's, it's not, it's not, it's, not, it's located properly, that it is in Pumalanga, and the municipality is Tembisila, and, and the, the district is in Kangala district. Yeah, no, no, that's, let, let me conclude, chair, by saying we, are, we will be always ready. To, to to come to the committee whenever whatsoever that you might need from us from time to time, uh, we are at your service to 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 account and and make sure that we brief and update the committee 
uh, from time to time on what on the implementation of the APP that the we've presented to your good self. Uh, and we really appreciate constructive engagement and 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 input that you are making. Uh, it, it 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 makes us to be on our toes and also be able to to really uh, 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 understand the the needs that the committee requires and so that we're able to work together to say how do we recover this sector how do we improve how do we create opportunities for our people and make sure that we create a better life for all thank you very much thank you very much uh, uh, honorable tm uh, for the comments and the uh, remarks uh, we also appreciate uh, that uh, the department will be uh, updating us um, as uh, the projects uh, are progressing, um, moving from the conceptual stage, uh, planning stage, uh, procurement stage, uh, uh, to the construction stage, including then the completion stage. So we really uh, appreciate that, uh, uh, particularly around the issue that you're raising with regard to those that are will be in construction will be updated in terms of the budget and the, the number of jobs uh, created and we really appreciate that and we will also appreciate if we could also be updated uh, with regard to the issue of uh, a Teguini metro uh, around the harbor um, yeah, the issue of the sewage uh, perhaps uh, even if, if it is in the form of a correspondence without necessarily waiting for uh, a meeting uh, between the committee and the department. Um, let me also express our disappointment that uh, uh, due to the technical uh, problems or glitches, uh, the minister has not been able to join us. Uh, we're looking forward to have uh, in our meeting and uh, engage with her as uh, uh, we have not uh, uh, engaged with her. Uh, we, I think this is a third meeting uh, since uh, she was appointed. Uh, she has never been to our meeting. So we, when we, we received the, a list of delegation and saw the, her name uh, uh, in the list of the delegation, we were excited uh, that we're going to have her and engage with her. Uh, unfortunately, it's uh, beyond her control. Uh, but uh, we hope uh, that uh, in the next meeting uh, she will be available. We, we have taken an approach now of uh, uh, engaging uh, specific programs because uh, uh, when they are all uh, together, come together in APPs uh, or annual reports, uh, it's, it's, really, it's really difficult to understand them clearly. But if you take them as, as a a program, uh, you, you, you get a better understanding. Uh, for now, we have a better understanding uh, of this program. I, I think it's program three, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, um, uh, but we will also be engaging uh, other uh, programs of the department uh, so that we have a better understanding uh, of uh, uh, these programs. And, let, let, let me also now take this opportunity to also thank uh, uh, DM, and, uh, DG, DDG, and the rest of the team of the uh, department uh, and the ministry, uh, but also thank the honorable members. Uh, uh, this is our last uh, committee meeting for this uh, uh, second term, honorable members. I would like to uh, thank you for uh, commitment and the uh, cooperation uh, during the second term of uh, uh, our program. Uh, we will meet again now on the 2nd of August, as we'll be taking a break uh, uh, for going to the constituency uh, from next week. I think our last day uh, in Parliament will be on the on Thursday the 23rd, except those who are in joint meetings and ad hoc committee meetings, 
uh, otherwise as a committee will meet again on the 2nd uh, of August. I would like to thank you very much. Also thank uh, uh, the staff of the committee and uh, thank the uh, members of the uh, staff of the communication unit of parliament uh, uh, for regularly uh, being part of the meeting and uh, uh, also making sure that uh, uh, the communities of South Africans out there uh, also uh, are, are logged in and uh, uh, follow the proceedings uh, of the meetings and also thanks to the media, uh, including the PMG. Uh, thank you very much, uh, PM, uh, the also honorable members, DG, DBG. Thank you very much. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Recording stopped. Bye bye, honorable members. Bye, chair. I'll just give you a call now.